In a few hours, the tension will be over. Weeks of hoping, of campaigning, of expectations will come to an end as the presenters pause and tell us, and the Oscar goes to Shahal Pelad on Hollywood's Big Night. The red carpet has been rolled out, the winner's envelopes folded and pressed. The 87th annual Academy Awards ceremony at the Dolby Theatre in Hollywood is ready to begin. Some of the major acting categories are practically nailed, with almost all bets going to Best Supporting Actor for J.K. Simmons' grand performance as a torturous conductor in Whiplash, and Best Supporting Actress to Patricia Arquette for literally aging on screen in Boyhood. Stop at the barrier. For the Best Actress prize, there is also already a certain win. I think Julianne Moore is as close to a sure thing as there is right now. She's won all of the Prognosticator Awards, including the Golden Globe and the SAG award she is a beloved figure who has never won an oscar and this performance in still alice is amazing i really think she's going to win but in the best actor category eddie redmayne's performance as physicist stephen hawking in the theory of everything was widely praised but will be facing off against another favorite <laughs> Hollywood veteran Michael Keaton and his comeback in Birdman. The Redman-Keaton duel, however, could be upended by Bradley Cooper, who portrays war hero Chris Kyle in the huge box office success American Sniper. The dark horse here, I think, is probably Bradley Cooper for American Sniper. If that film picks up momentum on Oscar night, he could surprise in that category. And when it comes to this year's best picture, the battle has reached its peak, confusing experts in what is considered one of the toughest years to predict the winner. Richard Linklater's all-American 12-year production, Boyhood, faces Mexican filmmaker Alejandro González Iñárritu's Birdman. And if Iñárritu takes the best director category, he will be the fifth consecutive non-American to do so, marking a possible shift in the Academy's taste in films and their preferable choices of filmmakers. And now to culture with Shahal Bader. And Shahal is joining me right now. How are you? Hi, Lucy. You're great. so I'm great. excited. I'm so excited. I remember <laughs> the smile from last year. Yes, very excited, though my uh, segment now is with some bad news. Unfortunately, what? not everything is glim and glad uh, is uh, a glam and glitter in, in the Oscars. And I remember that Tom Hanks last year dominated your uh, yes, it's uh, true. world. Well, and first now, of all, he's not he's here not now. <laughs> um, well, let's start with the biggest controversy. Oscars missed out an opportunity to make history this year when they did not nominate Eva DuVernay to Best Director. She is, oh, she could have been one of the uh, the first ever woman to win black woman to be nominated to at be least nominated. as a director. Wow. She directed Selma, a depiction of the life and story of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And this is a, a, the story of a man who called for the inclusion of African Americans in the American society, called out for the uh, to show the diversity of America. And right now, this Oscars is lacking this diversity. It's the you first know, especially time. Especially this year, especially yes, with everything exactly. that is happening with the and United States. And it's amazing because it's the first time since 1998 that there's not even one single actor who is African-American, not even one single black actor or actress whether it's a lead, a lead role or a supporting role, who are African Americans, who are Hispanic, who are Asian Americans. And the African American civil rights group uh, say that the film in industry isn't connected to reality, isn't connected to the diversity of America. They, it doesn't reflect women, Hispanics, African Americans, people of color. And in fact, they are planning on a demonstration tonight in front of the uh, Dolby Theater in Hollywood. Well, where are all the human rights? Well, uh, they're, they're, they're uh, trying. The actors who are always saying that no life one, should be you're equal. You're right. No one has called out, and and this is the reason: the numbers. Out of some six thousand members of the Academy, ninety-three percent are white, seventy percent are male, and you can't even think about diversity when these are the numbers inside the Academy. And people say, "What's the problem?" You know, it's just film. It's just entertainment. What we have to remember: the the Oscars aren't just entertainment. They are representative of a time, of an era when people look back at history, they do look at the films which depicted the culture and the times that we're talking about a very difficult racial uh, uh, year for America this year with a lot of racial clashes and 
this is not helping. You know, this is the hypocrisy of Hollywood. Absolutely, and I'll quote Darnell Hunt, who is a, a professor in UCLA, saying um, he wrote the Hollywood Diversity Report. He's saying um, it's an opportunity, like every blue moon, you get a black director uh, woman, and then you have this woman who uh, directs this film that gets all the critical acclaim. Selma is, uh, Selma is nominated for Best Picture, and she does not get nominated for Best Director. Hollywood is just missing out on an opportunity Hi. here. One more thing out of the eight Best Pictures nominated, not one has a lead protagonist woman. They are all from Stephen Hawking so to Michael Keaton and Birdman, their... only men. Yes, Shahal Pella, thank you very much. When they're going with their beautiful gowns and suits, remember that you're a little bit hypocrite. Two minutes and we will be back.